Welcome to this short introduction on loss functions for classification tasks. Now, the prototypical classification task is one where you have a sample, for example, an image, and you output, you associate to it a probability of it being of one of a class, of possibly one of two classes in the most basic form, which is binary classification here. So the prototypical example is dog and cat. Um, and we could say here that, for example, if the p output is less than 0.5, then it is a dog. And if p is above 0.5, then the image is actually of the cat category. Uh, in essence, this means that p is simply the probability that the output is a cat, and so p is, of course, being a probability, it's between 0 and 1. Uh, so you can actually draw it out on a linear scale here that goes from 0 dog to 1 cat, and if you predict for this image something on the lower part here, that will be false, but if you predict anything above 0.5, then you will be correct, and you will indeed have predicted the cat. Now, binary classification is useful, but of course it's limited to two classes, as, as its name indicates, and there are many cases where you need more than that. Um, so if you have more than two classes, we simply call this multi-class classification. And in this case, well, we can stay with the same kind of system where uh, to go to all these possible classes, well, we introduce one value p that is between 0 and uh, k minus 1, k being the number of possible classes. And then we would say, well, if p is less than 0.5, it's a dog. If it's between 0.5 and 1.5, it's a cat, and so on and so forth. So in essence, we would be creating a linear scale here, going from dog to cat to bear, lion, etc., etc., um, through, through each integer. Now, this is interesting, but, but it's actually not very well suited as we're going to see, because if you uh, indeed predict for this image something around here, you will say, well, it's false, it's in the wrong area. And if you predict something over here near cat, you will say, okay, that's good, it's correct. Um, but the notion of distance between these two is not very representative of the errors you're making. For example, if I were to predict bear instead of cat, that's also wrong, but in terms of distance, it's closer. So for gradient descent systems, whatever loss function you build, there's a risk that you're, you might say, okay, bear is getting better than cat. But that's not very intuitive. Many systems might actually confuse lions and cats more easily than bears and cats. So when you organize things like this, you, you introduce the notion of order between elements elements, even though it might not make sense to have an actual order between your classes. And so that's why for many systems in multi-class classification, this is not what we choose. Instead, uh, we choose something where we associate one probability to each class. And so each of these probabilities will be between 0 and 1 itself. And the total output p is in fact a vector of dimension k. Now there's a constraint on this, of course, because this image can all be, only be associated to one class. So in practice, all of these have to sum to one. All of these re represent a, a single probability. And so the sum of all PIs here has to be equal to one in this case. This is because uh, multi-class classification is one choice between many classes. But you also have problems where you can have more complex images in which several classes can appear in the same image. And in this case, well, we would like to say it's both one for cat and one for dog. So in fact, this is very similar to multi-class classification. The only difference is that you actually relax this constraint over here. Uh, you don't sum everything up to one. Now, um, if we want to build functions that actually produce these classifications, usually with neural networks, well, um, what we're going to need is labels, right? So we're going to give up there the label one for this is a cat, this is a truth, and that's what we're going to train against. Um, in the middle, it's, uh, we're going to give what's called a one-hot encoding, so a vector of dimension k, which will have a one for the class that we want for, for a cat, and zero for all the other classes. And in multi-label -cla classification, sorry, well, that's exactly exactly the same, except that we have relaxed the constraint, and so you can have several ones in this vector. Um, the other issue is that if you build a naive neural network, there's no reason for it to output zeros and ones, right? If you, if you just train a, a typical neural network, it will go from the bunch of pixels at the input to any, any value in R at the output. Um, so there are some useful functions to try to constrain this and help the network produce outputs that are well between zero and one. Uh, a very basic one is the logistic function, or sigmoid, uh, for which you have the equation here, and which does precisely that. It, it maps R to the zero-one compact. 
That's good for binary uh, systems where you only have one dimensional output. If you have several possible uh, classes, then you can use instead the softmax function, um, which, well, maps rk here to uh, 0, 1k, so that's good. But also it adds this constraint by construction that the sum of all the outputs is equal to 1. And so this is also very useful uh, as it uh, uh, helps us in the cases of multi-class classification. Right, so I've talked about many things except loss functions for this introduction to loss functions. So let's get to it. Um, let's say uh, you want to build a loss function for classification. The way this is usually done is uh, inspired from cross entropy, which is a concept coming from information theory. So the cross entropy of uh, P and Q here is actually the expectancy of log of Q given P. Um, and so it writes according to this equation. So it's simply the sum of the P times log of Q on all the, the possible discrete samples of the, the compact they are defined on. Um, the way we get we build a loss function from that is called categorical cross entropy. So we build a loss which is also a sum on all the possible samples in your database, um, but also a sum on all the possible classes of the tij. So these are the target values, the labels that you're going to use to train, um, times the predictions that are given for each of these samples by your by your model. Um, notice that there's a minus sign in front of here, and this is important. Um, this is what's going to to uh, enable the minimization algorithm to work correctly. No, so this is the shape that this function would have for a given single uh, target class where t is equal to 1. Um, and you can see that there are interesting features here. Since the target is 1, we want the network to output 1. So we want the loss function to be as the, at its minimum, in this case 0 uh, at 1, so that's good. Uh, we want it to be at its, at its worst uh, when we're far away, so at 0, and here it diverges to infinity at 0, uh, so that's also good. But it's not just a linear descent from one to the other. Um, remember that we said that we would probably threshold somewhere around 0.5 and say that if you give a prediction around here, then the class associated is already 1. So uh, giving an answer around here is, is pretty good already, and giving it uh, in the early stages here is pretty bad. And so this is something that this function incorporates because it penalizes is a lot here predictions that are on the on the left half but it pe penalizes very little the ones that are on the right half so it's going to encourage the network to forget the things that are really wrong but to not work out too much the ones that are already pretty good this is actually easy to derive in the case of a two class classification so binary classification we can we can directly write the whole thing out um, and it takes a, a very uh, a typical form where so I just replaced in this equation here the k by 2 because I have two classes so this writes actually something like this but t2 is actually 1 minus t1 because there are only two possible outcomes here so I can replace that in the equation and I get this shape this is known as binary cross entropy and as you can see, it's symmetrical. So um, if I uh, go from t1 equal 1 or t1 equals 0, I will have a symmetry for this equation. Uh, it will look like this. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm plotting uh, the, uh, the loss function as a function of uh, the output probability. And if the target is 1, well, you have this familiar shape. And if the target is 0, well, as I said, you get the symmetrical function. So in both cases, you're going to have a, a great gradient that's going to bring your network towards the direction that it actually needs to, to make its prediction. Okay, let's put all this together to figure out how we can treat these classification problems, uh, what we, have, we should put in front each time we want to actually solve one. Um, so starting back from binary classification that we saw at the beginning, well, we want a 0 to 1 output, so for that we need a, um, a sigmoid function, and uh, we also uh, quite naturally can use the binary um, uh, loss function, the binary cross entropy. So sigmoid plus binary cross entropy is a great way to go. For the multi-class classification, well, it's a little bit different. Uh, we have this constraint here that we want to follow, uh, and uh, we also have, well, not binary, but more than two uh, classes, so it's probably going to be categorical cross-entropy, right? So the right combination here would be softmax plus categorical cross-entropy, and the softmax, of course, as we saw, is has the role also of ensuring that the sum of all the probabilities is indeed equal to 1. And finally, for multi-label classification, it's very similar, except because we're relaxing this constraint, we no longer need a softmax. We can't really use a single sigmoid either because we want uh, k outputs. So what we do is we use k sigmoids, uh, one for each possible output, and a categorical cross-entropy.
All right, that's it for the basics on categorical loss functions. There are many more available in your favorite packages here, whether PyTorch, Keras, or, or any other. Uh, please check them out so that you can get the one that's best suited for your actual task. Thanks for your attention.